What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In last week's video, I asked you all to hit me up with any questions you may want answered. I got a ton of great questions about all sorts of things and I wanted to share a few of them here today. Like I've said time and time again, that's the number one goal of this channel. To bridge the gap between the known and the unknown for all of you. So let's jump into it. To begin, we're going to tackle the comments that we got on the last video. Starting with a couple similar questions from Ron and Corey about Driveline's track software. First off, Ron, thank you for the kind words, and thanks to both of you for the great comments. To begin with, I must start out by saying that I have not had any experience using track in the past. However, if you've followed this channel, you know that I am a very big fan of Driveline. So, I did some research into this product, and I could find nothing but good things said about this technology. No doubt, this technology will save you time. It will produce great graphics to help you show athletes progress through their player development process. And the kicker to me is, it's available to collect this data from Blast, Hitrax, and Rapsodo, and then add it into each player's profile, all onto one device. Now, is this doable through Excel or Google Drive? Yes, but it's going to take a lot more time and energy that you could focus towards getting your athletes better. To get track, you just need to know that the cost of the program is worth the time you'll save and the new resource that you'll now have. Also, if you follow the link in the description to the track page, if you're really interested in purchasing track, you can sign up for a 30 minute demo where they'll show you exactly what kind of things the product can do. So that's my brief take on the product. Again, I haven't used it, so I'm no expert, but if any of you have used it, help these guys out. What do you think about it? Have you enjoyed it? Leave a comment for them down below. Moving on to the next question, this one comes from Matt, and he's wondering about what I majored in in college. So first off, thanks for your question, Matt. If you haven't seen my video on my time as a student manager at the University of Iowa, definitely go and check it out. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Sport and Recreation Management with a minor in Business Administration, and I absolutely loved it. The program stressed more than just coming to class and getting good grades. It put me out in the real world meeting sports business professionals to help me gain valuable networking skills and more. I spent two summers working for the Chicago Blackhawks through this major, and I also traveled to four other big time sports cities to meet with other sports business executives. The major truly prepared me with real world experience, and if you're interested in hearing more about it, there was a phenomenal article and video interview about my experience in that program, so check it out in the link below. Now let's jump over to some of the DMs I received through Twitter. Our first question comes from Corey Cubs, and he was wondering what a good cost efficient option similar to the Edutronic camera would be. And before I jump into this one, I need to explain a couple things. First, unfortunately, Edutronic cameras is technically the budget option of a camera that will produce this quality high speed footage. Most cameras of this caliber are big and clunky and can even cost over $100,000. So, Edutronic was made to strip down those cameras to the bare bone essentials and believe it or not the cost of these cameras is technically quite affordable for this awesome quality footage. So that video was shot at about 1200 frames per second. I've collected tons of quality pitch design at 800 frames per second. That is a good range that I have used in the past. So if you're looking to get a camera to take high speed video try and find something in your price range that can shoot closer to that 800 fps range one important thing to note with these kinds of cameras is when frame rate goes up a lot of times your resolution or your video quality is going to go down so be aware of this and do thorough research when looking into a more budget friendly camera again if you're taking this first step towards pitch design video can be very useful and if all you've used in the past has been the slow-mo option on your phone, realize that that's only shooting at 240 FPS. So a jump even to 480 would be twice as slow with a better resolution than you had before. Just make sure that you do your research before you buy. Our next question comes from at amarchisani12 on Twitter. His question can really be broken down into two parts, so that's how I'm gonna tackle it. The first part of the question asks for my advice from taking a high school coaching job to the next level. And to be honest, it's tough. There are a lot of people out there who want to do that same thing. First and foremost, you need to find a way to provide value. 
above and beyond what everybody else is doing. So start by doing an awesome job where you're at. Second, make meaningful connections. Find a way to get connected with people doing what you want to do. Reach out and do informational interviews. Make some sort of reports and send them to people who could find value in your work. In the end, it really, really matters who knows you. And third, continue to constantly learn and improve your craft. If you're watching this channel, congrats, you're continuing to learn. But find ways to apply what I teach here to your daily life. Now on to part two. How would I use a limited budget to help develop high school pitchers? So first and foremost, I'd recommend tracking anything you can. Swings and misses by pitch type, pitches in the zone. Being able to provide real data as feedback is the number one way to promote improvement. If you're not tracking these things to begin with, you're not even gonna be able to see the progress that you may be making towards your goals. Second, think outside the box. Maybe there's another team or training facility that has some of this technology that may let you access their equipment. Get the guys there and do a test where they're at in the beginning of the season, and then check again at the end. Anything's gonna be better than nothing. Then third, have fun with it. Find ways to make these guys compete and wanna get better, because at the end of the day, at that level, having fun and building those bonds is almost as important as getting to the next level. Now our last question for today's video comes from Coach Ryan 10 on Twitter. He asked for my advice on attempting to get technology integrated at a training facility that has already purchased a Blast. First off, that's awesome that they bought Blast. It's a great first step. For me, that facility is already going in the right direction. It's now on you to see how you can show them how it adds value to what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, that academy is still a business and the money factor is gonna happen in any business. So getting this facility to invest in other technology will only come if they've seen a positive influence on their business and on their players from buying Blast in the first place. It's a two-way street and letting them know the benefits of all of this stuff on a player development standpoint and seeing how the academy could benefit from all of this on the field and off the field may be all they need. So keep pushing forward on that front. Then advice for implementing technology? Well, I've heard of this really awesome YouTube channel that posts weekly videos about topics similar to this one. It's called Simple Saber Metrics. But for real, I've done some videos similar to this in the past. I'll link the ones that they may find useful in the description, point them towards this video or any of those, and even have them reach out to me if they have any questions. All right, so before we wrap it up, there was one more message I received through Twitter with some awesome ideas for future videos. Luke has messaged me a bunch in the past and he's always had great recommendations. So if you'd like to see any of these three ideas implemented on the channel, let me know. Again, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about at the end of every video when I ask for comments, questions, or suggestions for a future video. All three of these things are viable options for the channel, and while I'd love to think that I have all the answers for what you guys would like to see, it's super helpful when I get comments or messages like these. So leave a comment down below or send me a DM on Twitter, and I'll consider making a video out of some of your ideas. So that's it for today's video. We will be back into the regular scheduled upload next week, but I thought it would be fun to take a step back and interact with you guys for a week. If this is something that you enjoyed, let me know and maybe I'll start adding a section like this onto the end of every one of my videos.